back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have your WWE Hell in a Cell 2021 review for you guys. If you guys usually check out the channel on my reviews, I typically have the figures in front of the screen, and you know, we break down each matchup. I let you guys know what took place at the show, and pretty much instantly react to the show as it happens and everything like that. But this kind of happened last minute. I didn't know what I was going to do exactly, and I just figured I'd experiment with it. Do a review in front of the camera like so. So if you guys enjoy this style or you don't enjoy the style, just let me know down in the comment section below if you guys want me to go back to the figures or whatever, and we'll never do this again, or whatever the case is, man. Just, uh, I figured I'd experiment with it here today, guys, but Hell in a Cell 2021, I mean, there's so many things to say about the pay-per-view, right? Like, first of all, why are we having a specific pay-per-view about it? It's usually in October, and just, they've really crushed Hell in a Cell, right? Like, it's not the same as it used to be, man. It's not, you know, a feud-type deal. Now, it's, okay, once a year, we'll do some Hell in a Cell matches all in one show. The feuds don't usually call for it, like likely never. You know, it's very hard. It, it, it's just lost a lot of its meaning, right? And on this show, there were some matches that I was looking forward to, but I don't know. I, I didn't even do predictions for this show because I really just, it, it just wasn't, it didn't intrigue me. Just like last show, he like, it just, I don't know. It, it, we're like in the WrestleMania dead period. It's in a period of wrestling where after WrestleMania, everybody's just kind of like in a wrestling depression or something. Nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, let's dive into Hell of Cell 2021. I'll let you guys know what happened, what I liked, what I disliked where I think we go from here, all the different things, guys. Let's go ahead and break down the action. Now, I did miss the kickoff show. However, I did hear that Natalya did defeat Mandy Rose in a singles match. You know, I, I wouldn't have really cared for that anyways, but we opened the show up with our first Hell in a Cell matchup for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Bianca Belair battles against Bayley. Matchup was very entertaining, I would say. You know, we got some creative aspects going throughout. Uh, I always love how in Bianca Belair's matches, she uses her hair as, you know, in some creative ways. Like in this one, she whipped back at the chair for Bailey. At one point, she even haircuffed uh, her hair to Bailey's wrist. I thought that was creative as well. You know, we got some good interactions all around. You know, I wasn't, uh, like I knew both ladies would perform because they're two of the best in the company. But I don't know. It's just, again, I'm in that deep part where I'm just like, yeah, this is great. But you know what I'm saying? So it was an enjoyable matchup. I enjoyed it. Bianca Belair does defeat Bailey, which I enjoyed. There were some good spots here and there. I would say, you know, if you're just replaying this and you want to know what happened, I would say this is worth the checkout. Not like a five-star banger classic, but it was enjoyable, and I think you would enjoy it. So, Bianca does retain. I agree with that. I don't think, you know, we were going to see her lose. I'm very glad that she continues on this run. Her and Rhea, you know, holding it down for SmackDown, holding it down for Raw. So, that's really all you can ask for, but I'm glad Bianca won, and it was a solid, entertaining matchup. Definitely go check it out if you guys missed it. Our next matchup, guys, was Seth Rollins taking on Cesaro, a matchup that I was very much looking forward to because I love, I love these guys. Seth Rollins is one of my favorites. You guys know this but coming in, you know, we had seen I think Cesaro had beaten Seth Rollins twice coming into this matchup, so that was kind of the story. Uh, you know, Seth Rollins has been assaulting Cesaro, making a fool out of him, hurting the arm, all of those different things. I feel like as soon as this matchup kicked off, Cesaro was beating the hell out of Rollins. Like, don't get me wrong, they both beat the hell out of each other the entire matchup. And if you hear, like, a faint, like, deep water running noise, it's because the shower is running right behind the camera there. So I do apologize if that happens. But I feel like Cesaro was beating the absolute absolute hell out of Seth Rollins to start this matchup off, man. Very physical, both back and forth. You know, we've seen these guys tie before. Their chemistry is unmatched. I mean, these are two of the best workers in the world, probably, in the world of wrestling. So, I mean, these guys were doing great stuff. Cesaro had on his sick-ass gold and black gear. Rollins in his, uh, his hitman s gear. It was an intense matchup back and forth, man. So, pretty much the story was built up. Both guys, you know, countering and countering. Physicality, physicality. Some unique moves from both men in this match. At the end of it, guys, we actually get a surprise roll-up. They're going back and forth, going back and forth, and Seth Rollins surprised out of nowhere with the roll-up. One, two, three. Seth Rollins steals the victory from Cesaro in a very good matchup. It seems as if, the, as if these guys are just going to fight forever, which I guess is okay with me because the matchups are always great, but Seth, Seth Rollins does pick up the win here, which is probably good. You know, I felt like for a while there, he was losing match after match, and I thought maybe he would be in line next to do other things, but it looks like this may continue on, so we'll just just have to see that, play that by ear and all of those things, but Seth Rollins does pick up the win over Cesaro, and it was a very enjoyable matchup. Next up, guys, was Alexa Bliss taking on Shayna Baszler. Now, I know a lot of people were crapping on the build of this matchup. You know, a lot of people felt that it was lame. It was a little bit, you know, too much for them, and I think I agree with it. You know, I didn't pay too much attention, but I did hear some things and, you know, see some things on social media and stuff like that, and so I went to check it out, and yeah, man, I just, I, I, don't, I don't know. Like, I can get behind a creepy gimmick and stuff like that, and I guess if it was 
just it was just done maybe a little bit better or if it had more of a sinister feel to it maybe I could have got on board a little bit with it or maybe if it was two characters that I cared more about and maybe this was their way of trying to get more people to care but I don't know I'm not a big Shayna Baszler person you guys already know that so I don't know her matches just kind of put me to sleep here and this matchup I didn't really care for I didn't really care for the outcome I did my best to try and buy into it here and I don't know the Alexa Bliss this Alexa Bliss that we're getting now like the gimmick and you know coming off the fiend and the creepiness and all of that I definitely enjoy that way better than her running around with Nikki Cross I'll tell you that much but I don't know if I'm completely I, I feel like she does need another thing with it or something like that I feel like something's missing I guess from the total package there but I do know that Alexa Bliss did defeat Shayna Baszler here I was in the middle of putting my son to sleep you know bathing him getting him ready and everything like that so I did miss a little bit of this match I missed the actual like action that led to the pinfall but Alexa Bliss did get the victory there and I guess I mean that's pretty much it but Alexa Bliss does win she continues on this path here and we'll see what comes of it next up was our Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens match man Kevin Owens one of my favorite wrestlers in the entire world we've seen these guys square off like a hundred million times right and I feel like you know that kind of hurts these guys even though every match they have is always a slap man I mean they've been they've been wrestling each other forever like forever way before WWE so I mean their matches are always entertaining I mean I can always get behind the wrestling match you know I'm not really invested in the feud per se because it's just a long-lasting rivalry or whatever you want to say but these guys beat the hell out of each other very physical at one point in the matchup I thought KO literally separated his shoulder there and I hope that he's all right I hope it's not like a Finn Balor situation where he's gonna be on the shelf for a while and you know we're gonna have to be out with you know without KO man they, I mean like I was just tweet I tweeted about it like he deserves a money in the bank man I don't know how like when he was a heel they didn't book that like it's it writes itself right I mean like good god it's literally made for him and his character I could just see him walking around strutting around slapping the case like god KO in the bank like it's literally like it writes itself but you know I mean what god in heaven however Sami Zayn and him go at it man this was a very fun matchup it wasn't the longest matchup ever but it was intense it was physical like I said a haluva kick there one two three Sami Zayn gets his win back from Wrestlemania I do believe that was and yeah I mean they're just kind of floating about right I mean like since KO lost to Roman Reigns he hasn't done something really of importance Sami Zayn you know he was in there for a minute and now he's kind of back there so I guess we're just gonna have to see where these guys fall I am interested to see where we go going into Money in the Bank again I hope that KO's shoulder is good but this was a fun matchup Sami Zayn got the win and I guess we'll just have to see where we go next up was our other half of the women's championship matches guys the Raw Women's Championship on the line Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair going to war here you know I was super afraid for Rhea here man because you know they love you know when Charlotte's gone she's gone right but when she's there Brad she usually has gold wrapped around her waist right so I was definitely afraid for Rhea's sake I knew that it would be a, a solid matchup but again another matchup where I kind you know I've seen it before I kind of know what to expect of, of course I love wrestling so you know I'm engaged with it I enjoy it whatever the case is but this matchup and you know they had some dramatic in there they had some good epic in there they had some physicality in there but at the end of the day what did it really matter at the end guys Rhea Ripley gets herself disqualified with the announce table covering I, I do believe and I was like oh so I, I don't know which makes me believe that we're not finished here which disappoints me a little bit but I'm just glad that Charlotte's not the new champion you know it could just be inevitable you know we may be moving towards that but it, on this night that did not take place but Rhea Ripley and Charlotte do have their matchup there and you know uh, I'm just casually waiting for this main event man are we gonna have a big return are we that's the only thing that's on my mind really you know so I'm, I'm waiting we'll see what happens in the main event guys let's go ahead and cover it and for our main event ladies and gentlemen we had Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley WWE Championship on the line last chance hell in a cell which means if Drew McIntyre loses he can no longer challenge for the WWE Championship as long as Lashley is champion now coming into this there was a lot of speculation oh John Cena is gonna come out and Brock Lesnar and Becky Lynch and all of these big time names unfortunately that did not happen you know uh, I hate to say it but we did not get a Brock Lesnar on this night or nothing like that at least uh, not to my knowledge but this thing went like 25 minutes or something like this man like the first I gotta say the first eight to ten minutes I wasn't really feeling it I kind of felt like oh just you know kind of you know it's it's Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre you know it's gonna be physical you know it's gonna be heavy lifting it's gonna be powerful and all those things which is great but it was your typical hell in a cell you know leading spot to spot nothing like out of just you know craziness that we've never seen before so that was you know a bit eh but as the match went on I started buying into it and buying into it and the story was pretty good with MVP getting involved and locking himself in the cage and there's a freaking gnat in my mouth and I don't like it but I liked that part you know MVP got involved in the matchup multiple times 
He kind of made Drew look weak. However, I still liked, you know, the factors. I love shenanigans. I love shenanigans if they play into it in a creative way. And, you know, it, it looks like it's going one way, but then it goes one way. So I kind of liked it at the beginning, but then it ended up doing too much, I think, which is, you know, it's kind of like picking and choosing and kind of, you know, being a little bit too critical probably. But at the end of the day, MVP distracts Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley retains the championship with a roll up in a Hell in a Cell match. Ah, Hell in a Cell, man. Can they ever book it correctly? You had the Fiend BS. You had Brock Lesnar interfering and throwing out a match in a no DQ situation. You had a roll up pin tonight. I mean, my God, what's happening, Bradley? This show was just such a mess show, man. Just not a show that I was really looking forward to. Why I didn't do predictions. It's just a, I don't know, man. Just it's again, it goes back to that dead period of wrestling where it just feels like everything is just so meh. Like everything's stale. Like you bite into it and you're like, God, what is this? Garbage? Like eating cardboard. It's like, yeah, it's wrestling. Yeah, we get moments here and there, but there's no substance to it outside of a couple things. I really hate Roman Reigns had his match on SmackDown. I think he would have really added to this show, but I guess three Hell in a Cell probably would have been a bit overkill. But I don't know, man. Let me know what you guys think down below. I felt like this, this show was just full of BS finishes and garbage for the most part, but I don't know, just a bunch of shitty finishes, I feel like, maybe, is kind of what this show is, is summed up by. But let me know what you guys thought of Hell in a Cell down in the comment section below. Do you guys like the face-to-face -face interaction, or do you guys like the figures? Or you guys, you, you just let me know down in the comment section below. But I think I'm getting the hell out of here, guys. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Another happy Father's Day to everybody out there. And again, if I do this in the future, maybe I can... I kind of did this last minute, so maybe I can, you know, plug in more stuff and give you a better critique. You know, this show wasn't the greatest ever. I did my best, but I would like to... To probably watch the show twice before giving you guys a review but again this was kind of an experiment so we'll see where it goes but thank you for watching subscribe to the channel and don't cross the line like bobby lashley did when he won by roll up or rhea ripley when she got dq'd or seth rollins with another you know a trap pin don't cross the line like bobby lashley did you cross